Hey guys, Vince and I are out here at OCP and the, in the conference on the floor checking out all kinds of cool stuff. We've got everything to, from networking to high performance GPU computers to bizarre contraptions that we've seen. This video is going to be a conglomeration of all kind of the cool stuff and the highlights that I saw that I thought would be really cool to share with you guys. Come on in with me and walk around and enjoy the show. Here at OCP 2024, and uh, I almost called it Tyler's booth. It kind of feels like that. I see you at these things so often. But Tyler from Kioxia, uh, what do you got for us here? What are you showing off? Well, it's good to be back at OCP, and uh, we're showing our latest announcement, which is our XD8. Eight? Bigger XD8. number better, right? Bigger number better. Okay. So it's an E1S product, and it's our first E1S that's designed for PCIe 5.0. Okay. So it goes fast? Goes fast. All right. Yes, drive goes fast. We like that. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Uh, everybody wants faster drives. Uh, yeah. But there are also some additional features we're showing here. Uh, yeah, I see some acronyms up on the wall <laughs> that have been all the buzz since FMS. Very buzzword, um, but a lot of people are interested. Uh, so it's flexible data placement, yep. and that allows the application layer to place the data specifically on the drive to control QoS and different things. So we're letting the application pick about where it wants to put data on the drive, um, what, is, what does that do? Because there's other terms that come in here like write amplification and stuff like that. What's FDP allow us to do? So we have it implemented here with RocksDB and it allows you to place the data so that it doesn't have to move the data as much. So we're actually showing a reduction of write amp. Um, that means as data is written to the drive, sometimes it has to move it around inside the drive and that increases the number of writes. Yeah. So to keep those down, we use flexible data placement to reduce the write amp. Okay, so this almost feels like inverse disk defragmenting. In some ways, <laughs> yes. It's allowing it to put it where, where it makes sense, right? Right. Okay, and because it's flash, it doesn't care. Or reducing the amount of rewrites of data is yes. really a big part of this. Well, write amplification can be a massive killer of SSDs too, where if you see so much extra write amp, it's, it's really not good. Absolutely, and RocksDB inherently has a lot of write amp. That's why we chose it for our plugin that we wrote. Okay. Uh, we're planning on open sourcing the plugin oh. so that anyone can use it. Um, but RocksDB by itself can have as high as seven or higher, seven X or higher write amp amplification. So that data can be written through the different okay. compaction layers, written over and over and over and over that writes a lot of data to the drive unnecessarily. Right, and that excessive wear and overtime right. cost. Is there a performance benefit, impact to uh, this? Not the way we have it implemented here. Um, oh, actually there is. Sorry, yes. Does, does it? There is a performance impact. It's faster. Our, with our plugin, uh, FTP EXT4, we uh, basically double the throughput. You're doubling the throughput with FDP on right. Rocks TV. Right. Right. So it's not going to speed up every application on every drive ever, but for this. Right now, it's application layer. Eventually, FDP may be integrated back into Linux or into other operating systems. Don't give those Linux guys another idea. <laughs> it's a, it, it's a, a feature that a lot of people are interested in, so yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if that's the direction it goes. This is really cool tech. It was just announced at this show. Super exciting stuff. Uh, any any indication on when we can get our hands on this and play with it? They're coming soon. So okay. you'll, right. you coming guys will soon. have them in the, in the lab here in a little bit. I won't hold your feet to the fire on this. You've always been good to us. Tyler, thanks for talking FTP with us. Appreciate your time. I'll uh, see you around, bud. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Great to see you. Acton showing off these really cool liquid-cooled switches. As we learned back at GTC, the need when we start getting into these 800 gig territories of our network switching, there's a lot of power going through those switch chips. These ones are Broadcom switches. They partnered with Edge Networks in order to put these together. We've got liquid-cooled switches in here. They've got a liquid-cooled Gaudi. We've got an interesting, unique design on their CDO. Additionally, Edge Core Networks and Acton are working on making their switch gear compatible for customers who want full immersion cooling. They've got a concept here in this small micro tank to show off one of their switches working in the full immersion. As we learned at BP, this is really important to certify all of the components in both the switch and the networking cables and the power cables to make sure that they don't break down in any way. A really promising stuff to be able to start getting the switch gear into the immersion as well and be able to capture and recycle that heat. Acton's got some really cool stuff to show off here at OCP. Uh, hopefully we'll see more from these guys soon. 
Here at the MyTac booth, they're showing off some cool stuff too. We've got this uh, blade system that's liquid cooled and it's got a couple of E1S drives and loads of I.O. on the front, but the neat thing is, is those connectors on the back. Everything blind mates into the blade enclosure so that way the blade can get its power, it's liquid cooling and everything. This supports the new AMD Turin 500 watt CPUs. They're also showing off their Grace Blackwell. This is just a mechanical mock-up, but it uh, has the layout of where the Grace Blackwell will be in these. This is the MGX style platform, not to be confused with the NVL72. So there are gonna be some changes between this and the final product. And then this is the PCI Express version of the MGX. We love these, we've seen these, and we've got a couple in the lab, not necessarily this exact one. Loads of E1S storage across the front, big bank of fans to keep those eight massive PCI Express GPUs cool in the back. Fun stuff from MyTac over here at OCP. Let's get on to the next one. And our old friends Castrol are over here. They partnered again with Summer to create one of these amazingly beautiful immersion tanks. Summer really has the talent to be able to make these things and make them eye-catching and pop. We've got a high power, uh, high temperature system here for dual Intel Xeons. You can see that the fluid inlet is 72, the outlet 77. We're running our CPUs at about 500 watts each. They're well within their limits and everything's looking good. Really cool stuff here. These are always eye-catching, but they've also got a Grace Blackwell over there. So let's take a look at that as well. So by Grace Blackwell, I meant Grace Hopper. Still really cool. We can see we've got the tubes coming in here. It's spraying the coolant down and it's coming out the sides. They've got little ramps in here to help circulate the coolant. Again, this is using the cash roll fluid that we saw over in the UK in one of the Submer display tanks. These things are absolutely visually stunning. This one's running at a much lower temperature. So there's a few things that you can do differently with the heat rejection, depending on the fluid temperature that you're generating. These chips are perfectly happy to run up at that, you know, 80, 90 C, or you can run them lower if you need to. But check out our full video when we visited Cashflow's Liquid Cooling Center of Excellence to learn more about the different types of coolant and how the temperatures affect the outcome. On to the next. We saw these back at Computex, but it's good to see them here again at OCP. This is ASUS's offerings of all kinds of different stuff. We've got everything from kind of a general purpose compute. This is a Xeon platform, all the way up to a big eight-way Gaudi system here. Behind me, we've got a Grace Blackwell system. Again, this is another mechanical board, so it's just mocked up for reference for them to make coolers and put power in and, and how to design everything. But really like to see all the E1S drives. So these had the blanks in them, but it looks like all these systems are going E1S. It seems to be the way the industry is going these days. And of course, ASUS brought out their GB200 NVL72. 72, 72 Grace Blackwell. This is an NVIDIA reference architecture, but they're really showing that they've got the chops to be able to put one of these systems together. And this one's the magical one. I believe this came out either at GTC or uh, Computex. Jensen himself actually signed the signs. So very cool stuff. Thanks for having us in your booth, ASUS. On to the next. Here at the MSI booth, they're showing off this bad boy. This is super cool. This has a really long model number, but they say we can call it the 3U2N, or 3U tall two node AMD Epic server platform. This guy has two nodes side by side. It's all cold aisle serviceable on the front. There's the BMC card up here. We've got our NIC card on an OCP slot, all your drives. And when you pull it out, it's got all this room in here for this big heat sink. There's actually four massive fans in the back that pull all the air through this chassis down the sport back in the back. Brian's a big fan of that one. This guy can support the new Turin chips at 500 watts, two of them side by side, each in their own distinct node. All the power and all the cooling's managed in the back, and you can handle your servicing of each node up here in the front. Really cool stuff from MSI. So that's all the cool stuff that Vince and I found here at OCP 2024. Hope you guys liked it and maybe learned something or uh, found something new to go check out. For now, storageview.com, link in the description. Come hang out in the Discord if you have any questions about what you saw or uh, you wanna learn a little more, we can point you in the right direction. For now, that's all, we'll see you around.